Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> um, this is the last talk in our series on the Mino World after a Mino World Cup. Um, it's been a really good semester of, of talks. I really appreciate all the feedback you've gotten. Uh, the speakers have all appreciated it. Um, I am introducing our final speaker in our series, Professor Mahfoud Amara uh, from Qatar, the, um, Qatar University and the College of Education. He is currently um, Associate Professor in Sports, Social Sciences and Management. Um, he was formerly the Director of the Sports Science Program at uh, Qatar University. He earned his PhD from Loughborough University um, in Sport Policy and Management. He's written a lot on um, sports and politics and the history of sport in the MENA region, ranging from North Africa to the Gulf to um, all other places. Um, he's edited a number of books. Most importantly, I think, is his uh, monograph, Sport, Politics, and Society in the Arab World 2012. Um, this is actually where I was first introduced to Professor Amaro's work. Uh, it goes into great detail, both qualitatively and, and quantitatively, on a number of issues, uh, such as football in post-colonial and post-conflict Algeria, business of sport in the Arabian Peninsula, et cetera. Um, and we'll hear a little bit about that today, and I'm sure a lot that he's worked on since then. He's also um, edited volumes on, um, on a number of issues related to our, our seminar this year, um, including a, a book on sports around the world, edited with uh, Charles Parrish, John Nallwright, Dean Allen, Charles Little, Daryl Adair, um, and he was the regional editor for the Middle East. He also edited uh, Sport in Islam and Muslim Communities, along with Alberto Testa, and Sport in the African World with John Nallwright. So in other words, he's kind of one of the experts on the subject that we've been talking about this entire term. So it's only pertinent, it's only perfect that he is our final speaker uh, on this topic today, and he is speaking on the geopolitics of sport in the MENA region. Professor Amara, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction, and uh, I would like to express my gratitude for the invitation to address uh, the universities of Michigan Simmons, Simona, uh, Simna's curriculum series on the MENA World Cup. It is a pleasure to have the opportunity to share my insights uh, regarding the study of sports in the MENA region. My journey in this field has uh, started both um, or encompassed both uh, an external perspective during my time uh, in the UK and internal perspective since my reallocation uh, to Qatar in 2015. The world appeared to be a notably more optimistic state during the post-COVID-19 uh, 22 uh, FIFA World Cup, as illustrated uh, in some of the pictures um, uh, on the slides, which I took at that time. In, con in, con in contrast to um, uh, today's landscape marked by distressing images of conflicts uh, and war uh, coming from the region. The two, the two uh, the 2022 FIFA World Cup served as a brief respite, a global celebration of our collective enthusiasm for sports, a force with the remarkable capacity to bring together individuals from diverse cultural and societal backgrounds. As academics, it is incumbent upon us to adopt a critical perspective when analyzing such events. However, we must also acknowledge the undeniable power of sports. For me, this event also served as a, a invaluable uh, opportunity for introspection and reflection on my own work within the realm of sports studies. I choose the title Geopolitics of Sports in the MENA region, but it could be uh, um, the politics of doing research and studying sports in the MENA region. In the upcoming slides, I will provide a brief overview of my academic journey into the study of sports in the MENA region, highlighting how this reflection has influenced my research and insights over more than two decades already. 
My journey in sports studies in the MENA region uh, started with my PhD uh, back in uh, 2000, which focused on the professionalization of sports uh, in Algeria. At that time, there was a notable scarcity of literature concerning sports in the region. My research initially drew from available studies at that time, which explored football and identity within uh, a colonial context. Uh, the work, for instance, of uh, Philip uh, Dine, football migration and diaspora, the work of uh, Lafranchi and, uh, or Paul uh, Silverstone, relationship between sport and politics in Algeria and Tunisia, the work of Yusuf Fates and uh, Borhan Arais, sport management in Morocco, elucidated by Mohamed Kaaj, the intersection of women and sports in Muslim uh, or Islamic context as studied by Hargreaves and Ahmed. So there were only few uh, studies back then. So the scarcity of available literature compelled me to explore various interdisciplinary fields in the, in the uh, to unravel the essence of sports in the MENA region. This journey encompasses um, and North African and Middle Eastern studies enabling me to contextualize the region by the delving into its politics, history, and rich culture. My exploration extended to Francophone studies, where I examined the sport through the lenses of the significant influence of French culture, particularly in North Africa. This influence extends to various aspects, including communication and the organization of sports, in contrast and in opposition sometimes, to the backdrop of Arabic culture and language. Post-colonial studies played a pivotal role in my research, shedding lights on the, on the dynamics of post-independence countries in the region and their evolving identities, as well as state ideologies. I also ventured into the realm of linguistics and discourse analysis, emphasizing the crucial role of language as a means of legitimization in shaping the narratives around or surrounding sports uh, as policy and practice. Moreover, my academic journey led me to fields of uh, media and cultural studies where I dis uh, dissected how meanings are framed, portrayed and conveyed within the context of sports. These interdisciplinary pursuits uh, have empowered me to establish vital connections between my research and diverse subdisciplines within the realm of sports studies, including fields such as sport management, marketing, sociology, and geopolitics. Embracing this holistic approach has significantly enhanced my grasp of the dynamics around sports in the MENA region revealing its links to the domain of business, culture, uh, politics, and society. However, this comprehensive perspective comes with its challenges, as it occasionally poses difficulties in uh, neatly defining my identity as a researcher and academic. I vividly recall my initial participation in the World Congress of Middle Eastern Studies uh, back in 2006, which was held in Jordan, uh, in Amman, at the time when I introduced myself as a researcher focusing, focused on the study of sport in the Middle East, not everyone grasped the significance of my presence at the Congress. A similar scenario unfolded uh, at Sports Studies Conference, where the exploration of the Middle East as a distinct area of study, at least before Qatar won the bid to host the FIFA World Cup, was still in its nascent uh, stages. This process of bridging between sports studies and other uh, fields influenced uh, an array, also influenced by an array of uh, uh, authors and readings, enabled me to situate the debate within my study on the region in relation to complex themes such as modernity, postmodernity versus tradition, colonial and postcolonial conditions, the discourse on structure and agency, and the interplay of global and local dynamics and trends. In the next slides, I will offer some themes emerging uh, 
um, from my studies to summarize how these debates uh, or these dichotomies were deployed in my research uh, publications. I will start first with the, the first theme, which is about football and nation state formation and youth culture in Algeria. It explores the relationship between football and state politics in Algeria uh, across various political phases. It examines the Algeria state's engagement with football during pivotal uh, transitions, including shifts from socialism to post-socialism or market, market economy, from one-party states to multi-party politics, and through era marked by political violence. Football's role within the context of Algerian nationalism is uh, central, as the sport has historically served as a powerful tool to mobilize or to mobilize support for state ideologies and asserting the nation's identity. Even before its independence, the party leading the Algerian revolution, FLN, understood the growing significance of football uh, to promote Algeria's struggle for independence from France and to form the first uh, football national team, the FLN national team, uh, to which played uh, a number of uh, unofficial matches uh, with countries, particularly in the socialist bloc, to internationalize the Algerian uh, cause for independence. Moreover, the research analyzes how football stadiums, starting from the late 1980s and during uh, the political turmoil in the 1990s, named also as the Black Decade, have evolved into dynamic arenas where diverse ideological, cultural, and socioeconomic claims are articulated, particularly in response to significant political and economic changes. And I want to draw atten your attention to this picture uh, of uh, a national uh, textile uh, company, which was the, the main sponsor of uh, Algeria uh, in its first appearance uh, in the international world stage uh, in the, the FIFA World Cup in 1982. Uh, so, and there were stories that uh, the Algerian team at that time or the Algerian Federation, they refused uh, sponsorship from Adidas because they, they wanted to use the opportunity of the FIFA World Cup 1982 to promote uh, Algerian uh, national uh, products and also to showcase Algeria's uh, socialist uh, uh, development. The role of football as a medium for youth expression. Um, so they utilized football chanting, powerful, uh, powerful uh, channel to convey their identities, voice their socio-economic frustrations. Notably, the underscores or the study underscores the significance of this chanting and as well as online platforms and social media as, as unconventional political spaces uh, and subversive expressions to challenge institutional discourse and question the political uh, legitimacy. Moreover, the transnational influence of Algerian football, highlighting, uh, for example, the adoption of European styles of expression mixed with local rhythms and pop culture, reflects the broader impact of globalization on uh, sports uh, in Algeria, but also in the whole of uh, North Africa and the Middle East. Overall, this theme provides valuable insights into how football serves as a catalyst for social and political engagement among Algerian youth, bridging local and global in the process, uh, which can be applied to other similar contexts in the MENA region. The second theme uh, is about sport and political leaders in the Arab world. Uh, it focuses on the relationship between sport and state politics uh, from a structural point of view, from institutional point of view. It investigates the active participation of Arab regimes and political figures in the realm of sports, 
often leveraging it as a potential tool for mobilizing their populations and reinforcing their political ideologies and legitimacy. Additionally, it sheds lights on the multifaceted role of sport as a political instrument, elucidating how it has been employed as a means for or of nation state building, facilitating diplomatic relations, and showcasing ambitious or ambitious development initiatives, particularly in the context of hosting major sports events. Moreover, the study underscores the personal involvement at different levels and degrees of Arab leaders in sports to symbolize power and masculinity. Arab leaders strategically utilize sport as a powerful tool for shaping their public image on both domestic and international fronts. This deliberate approach seeks to cultivate a positive perception of national leaders or the so-called Azaim, uh, the, 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 the nation's leader, while also serving as a, uh, as a means to legitimize state ideologies. Additional, additionally, sports uh, uh, serve as an ideal platform for showcasing the nation's development projects with a particular emphasis on the visibility, the visibility of the leaders during regional and international sports events. The third theme is about sport and modernization debate in the Arabian Peninsula. The studies under this theme shed light on the multifaceted roles of sport in the context of the Arabian Peninsula or the Arabian Gulf. Firstly, they underscore how sports, particularly football, uh, and the hosting of major sports events, such as the Asian Games, the World Cup, the Formula One, are strategically employed by regional leaders uh, for nation branding and international recognition. They emphasize also the significance of economic dim dimension, wherein investment in sports infrastructure and events serve as integral components of broader strategies aimed at diversifying economies away from oil uh, dependence, reflecting the region's forward-looking approach. Finally, the studies delve into the nuanced uh, relationship between modernization or postmodernity or hyperreality and tradition, examining the delicate balance between preserving or preserving traditional sports and culture while simultaneously embracing modern sports and globalization trends and practices. This interplay between contemporary development and cultural heritage is a crucial aspect of understanding the evolving sports landscape in the whole MENA region. Sports serve as a powerful tools for projecting a modern yet culturally authentic image to the world, contributing significantly to the shaping of national identity. Additionally, sport is recognized as a vital, vital platforms for societal and youth engagement, offering avenues for social participation, health improvements, and the cultivation of national pride among the population, citizens, and residents. Knowing that some countries in the, uh, in the GCC or in the Gulf region, uh, the citizens are, are minority. Uh, in comparison to the other expats who are who uh, constitutes the majority, which is kind of unique in itself with regards to the dynamic within the society. Engaging with crucial uh, topics and addressing pertinent criticism such as political, social and social reforms, environmental sustainability and the long term viability of sports investment is uh, as important uh, in the global uh, dialogue uh, surrounding sports. This discourse gains um, heightened significance due to the ever-growing commercialization of sports, which internationally and, and in the region, um, which introduces a, a host of challenges uh, related to ensuring uh, the implementation of uh, principles of good governance uh, in the sports arena. The fourth theme is that of individual experiences and multiple uh, uh, identities. 
The studies under this theme delve into the role of sport in shaping and reflecting both individual and cultural identities with a particular emphasis on Muslim uh, women. They emulate the complex interplay between personal agency, cultural norms, and global sport practice within this context. A primary focus um, of these studies is the examination of how sport serves as a powerful medium uh, for the expression of both individual and cultural identities, particularly uh, evident among Muslim women athletes. Uh, explore the multifaceted dynamics surrounding the hijab or the veil uh, in sports, uh, notably within the framework of international events such as the Olympics, uh, shedding lights on the nuanced issues surrounding personal agency and cultural uh, expectations. Uh, we need to consider here uh, there is an important timing when it comes to the, the visibility or the hyper-visibility uh, uh, of hijab or, or the veil in the international uh, sports arena is the 2012, uh, which was the, you know, the Olympic Games in London. It was the first time that uh, all Muslim countries uh, had uh, women uh, uh represented uh, in their uh, uh, women athletes represented representing the uh, uh you know the muslim countries in the olympics uh the last uh countries to uh, send uh, women athletes uh, was um qatar saudi arabia uh, and uh, the brunei island and this has to do also with uh, the changes that were made uh, or the the flexibility from international sports federation to allow uh, hijab uh, to, uh, to, and to allow uh, athletes with a hijab to compete uh, in international world championships and uh, the Olympic Games. Additionally, critical analysis how international media narrative portray Muslim uh, athletes, women athletes, with a specific emphasis on those who choose to wear the hijab underscore the importance of representation and its impacts on the broader discourse surrounding gender, religion, and sports. Addressing as well the, the, the crisis of meaning in Europe uh, regarding uh, Islam uh, and the presence of Islam uh, as a religion, whether, either at the, the public sphere or the private sphere, where, where misconceptions significantly influence the discourse on sport and Islam, um, and you know, in in a plural terms, you know, with regards to the different uh, expression of uh, Islamic faith and Muslim identities in a European secular uh, context. This is particularly uh, evident, uh, maybe uh, even more today in France, uh, France, which is going to host. Uh, the next 2024 uh, Olympic Games, where the debates on the integration of Muslim communities, including athletes with uh, Muslim culture and faith, into secular values are specifically specifically contentious and polarized, polarizing uh, in relation um, uh, to private and uh, public uh, expression of cultural identities and the separation of religion and uh, culture of origin and the public uh, sphere. It highlights the depiction of Islam in the French uh, sports context and society in particular, um, and the scoring the pot politicization of Muslim athletes' identities, the interpretation of incidents involving athletes in France, often viewed through a clash of civilizations, lens which tends to oversimplify the complex cultural and religious identities. Additionally, it addresses the dual identity of Muslim athletes who navigate their hybrid identities in the sports uh, arena, torn between their countries of birth, birth and country of origin. Sport emerged as a significant terrain of these athletes to express and negotiate their identities, including choosing to play for their country uh, of origin or their parents' uh, uh, country of origin as a means to reconnect with their roots and resist stigma, both in their countries of birth as well as in their country of origin. 
To summarize, in my studies, uh, I delve into the role of sport in the process of nation state building and post-colonial societies with a specific focus on the Middle East and North Africa region to highlight the dynamic interplay between tradition and modernity, uh, attention that is especially uh, pronounced in the realm of sports and sh shed lights on how traditional values coexist and interact with modern or postmodern elements in these uh, societies. Furthermore, my studies illustrate the complex interplay between structure and individual agency. This aspect is crucial in understanding how institutional framework and personal actions collectively shape the sporting landscape, uh, in particularly in the uh, MENA region. Additionally, my research provides insights into the interaction between global influences and local cultures in sports, emphasizing how institution, uh, sorry, how international trends and local traditions uh, interweave to create unique sporting experience and narratives. A significant component of my work also revolves around the role of media in shaping and reflecting cultural narratives in sports through an analysis, an, an analysis of media narratives and representation. I explore how media uh, acts not just uh, as a mirror reflecting social attitudes towards sport, but also as a powerful agent in shaping perception and discourses within sports and beyond. Future studies. The following are some topics that are worth considering to extend the debates around sport as a complex social phenomenon in the MENA region. Comparative studies, for instance, in the region on the development of sports, nation state formation and nation uh, uh, branding, as well as international engagement. Uh, for instance, uh, the shared experience between monarchy states in the Middle East uh, and North Africa, following Qatar, uh, um, other monarchy states will be hosting uh, uh, the FIFA uh, World Cup, uh, Morocco co-hosting uh, the 2030 with Spain and Portugal, and Saudi Arabia, the 2034 FIFA World Cup. So there is something unique about the monarchy states in the region, how they are engaging with global sports. To shed lights on the enduring effects of hosting sport events on local communities, uh, including aspects, aspects such as economy, consumption, and infrastructure, the role and the experience of women in sports with a particular emphasis on how cultural, religious, and social norms influence their participation and their presentation, and uh, exploring the potential of sport as a catalyst for youth engagement and development, especially in regions characterized by uh, youthful uh, demographics. Thank you for your attention and uh, looking forward for your uh, questions. Thank you. Uh, anybody have any questions for Professor Amara about his work or the future? On uh, go ahead. Um, have you seen the recent FIFA documentary on the Saudi women's team in football? Um, I didn't see the specific specific documentary, but I have, you know, uh, since I think for the last few years, there have been emphasis on the role of women uh, in sport in Saudi Arabia, because this is, uh, even from a Saudi perspective, uh, this is important, uh, because they have been, of, of course, judged on their uh, modernization agenda in sports in relation to the integration of uh, women uh, in the sports uh, sector. Not only in terms of uh, sport participation, which I, I also reflected on that, you know, in my presentation, and particularly on the uh, 2012 as being a, a key, key moments uh, uh, in the women participation, uh, or, or particularly of Muslim uh, women uh, in sports, but also in decision making uh, positions. So we have seen, uh, you know, many uh, uh, Saudi women integrating decision making positions in in uh, sports uh, organizations. So I think this is important from the Saudi pr perspective that 
to show to the rest of the world that they are ready, you know, to engage with this uh, debate. And, and of course, you know, having a, a woman football team, this is uh, in itself uh, a big step, you know, um, for the Saudis. And this can be a role model. I mean, those women, uh, Saudi football uh, uh, women, they can be a role model for other uh, women to, you know, to engage in uh, maybe uh, in a male-dominated uh, kind of uh, types of sports uh, uh, for the GCC, women in the GCC, but also for the whole uh, um, uh, Middle East and North Africa. Although there have been, uh, you know, there are some changes or some differences between, let's say, the women sports uh, in North Africa and the history of women sports in North Africa in comparison to, uh, let's say, uh, women in sports uh, in the in the Gulf region. Uh, as we have seen with the, the Moroccan uh, uh, football team that qualified to the uh, FIFA Women uh, World Cup and they were the first, you know, to move to the second uh, uh, leg of the of the tournaments. And uh, I think now Morocco, they are very keen on, uh, after co-hosting the FIFA World Cup uh, 2030, they are, I think they will go for, to bid to host the, the FIFA Women uh, World Cup in Morocco. Um, you talked a little bit about how you've done uh, research on like the fan bases adopting like the European styles of um, like expression in sports, um, like specifically with like Italianization and stuff. Have you found that people like have like supported that and like wide ranging support of that, or is there is it just like specific like small groups and that it's like starting to grow? Uh, thank you for this question. Of course, there are differences between countries in North Africa that are close to Europe. Uh, so they uh, naturally they get uh, the you know the the, the how would say the the European influence in because of the geographical closeness. Uh, so it's uh, it's a natural uh, in uh, in North Africa, considering as well the large uh, diaspora of uh, North Africa, uh, African community in Europe, let's say in Belgium and in France. So there is a, a natural exchange of uh, of culture, uh, either in of uh, cultural expression uh, and uh, uh, also experiences uh, in the sporting uh, context. So uh, while, so th therefore the engagement was, uh, it started, you know, even uh, before that, you know, during the colonial uh, era, uh, you know the North Africa was dominated or by the uh, was colonized by mainly by France and some part of North Africa by Spain. So there was you know this European influence there. And even after the the you know the independence, uh, despite you know the the states um, uh, uh, in those countries uh, uh, endeavor to uh, establish, let's say, to reestablish uh, an Arab an Islamic kind of uh, identity uh, for those nations, but they couldn't, you know, you couldn't, you know, I mean, you cannot get rid of a hundred years of history, of shared history. So, and this is was the say, this is also experience, uh, this was uh, expressed in the sporting uh, context uh, in with regards to consumption of, uh, 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 of uh, sports uh, products or, uh, or even in terms of the, you know the the chanting, you know, uh, of those uh, football uh, supporters and fans, and particularly in Algeria, we have been, have been talking in the nineties of this phenomenon of the Ita Italize it sorry Italianization, uh, which is the product of the uh, satellite uh, broadcasting of uh, the Italian. Uh, league football league, uh, particularly in North Africa at that time, it, it was free to air. Uh, so, uh, so that there there was a big influence of the Italian football culture uh, in North Africa, in uh, and also as well as the Spanish uh, Liga, uh, particularly in uh, parts of uh, in Algeria and Morocco, uh, and uh, this was also. Um, uh, developed even further with the, you know, the globalization of those sports clubs, particularly let's say Real Madrid and FC Barcelona. So they this brought, you know, all this uh, influence uh, into North Africa, but also after that into the uh, Middle East, uh, with 
Al Jazeera Sports, the will be in sport, uh, uh, starting, you know, broadcasting those uh, um, major leagues, you know, particularly the Spanish and the Italian. And after that, you know, the Premier League, uh, the English Premier League. So, yeah, so the global, you know, the European influence is, uh, is uh, I mean, of football, particularly of football or soccer is there. Uh, and but what is interesting is the, the hybridization of that, you know, in terms of how uh, the uh, the football uh, or sport uh, space is also um, it becomes a, a space for the expression of local cultures, uh, local uh, types of music and rhythms in uh, uh, in the you know in the supporting uh, the club. So it's interesting and uh, amal- amal- amalgamation, amal- I would say mixture. A uh, nice mixture between the European influence and the local influence. Of course, there may be some movements within North Africa and Middle East that are maybe resisting this European influence because it may be seen as a form or a sign of Westernization, uh, and particularly with the movements that are, let's say, conservative, uh, where maybe they will be wary with this kind of uh, Western uh, influence. But uh, you know the how is it the 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 f- sports you know the the the, the enthousi- enthusiasm around sport is so powerful that uh, even the conservative uh, maybe uh, movements they can they cannot you know uh, let's say uh, uh, have a, a strong influence uh, um, you know in terms of changing uh, its perception so uh, and uh, and even even within the I would say even those uh, the most conservative uh, movements uh, uh, in, within the Middle East and North Africa, they, some of them they are also they, they may be supporters of uh, Liverpool or they may be supporters of uh, Real Madrid, and they they find maybe uh, not easy uh, to uh, join their uh, position, ideological position, with their passion for sports as well. Thank you. Would you say that there is? Uh a distinctive difference in the in between the way that North African sporting communities um, have adopted these practices as opposed to say communities in the Gulf. Uh, thank you for this question. Yes, uh, there is a distinction in terms of because of the historical trajectory of you know the colonial uh, experience and uh, how sport has been adopted and integrated in the nation state formation of those North African countries from the beginning. I mean, for Algeria, Algeria existed as a, uh, as a football nation before it before the you know it was recognized as a nation state in in the United Nations. So uh, they had their national team in 1958. That becomes the, you know, the the flagship of the Algerian uh, revolution, uh, you know, and uh, so uh, soon after the independence, the uh, the uh, countries like Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria, and maybe to lesser extent uh, uh, other countries like Libya and Mauritania, they understood the importance of uh, sport and importance of using sport as a way to consolidate their independence, you know. Uh, Thinking about all the power of having uh, your own flag being displayed, let's say, in the Summer Olympics or in the FIFA World Cup. So, uh, so they, they have been, uh, they, they, uh, I think, they integrated the international sports community earlier than countries, let's say, in the uh, in the Gulf region, um, uh, because of their history uh, of you know they were independent in nineteen seventies and. Uh, I think their integration into the international sports was happened uh, later on. But it's what is interesting now is that that uh, countries in the Gulf region maybe they they, they seem to be more, even more progressive. They are taking more progressive stance toward uh, global sports than let's say countries some countries in North Africa because of the uh, the economic uh, uh, kind of uh, capabilities and capacities they have and the wealth they have which enable them to to invest uh, in the international uh, or in the global sports uh, industry. I will, there is also, I mean, examples like Syria and, uh, uh, and uh, let's say Egypt. Egypt was one, one, was one of the first Arab uh, country to engage with the international sports and they participated in the, the second FIFA World Cup uh, 1934. Uh, countries like uh, in, uh, in Levant, uh, let's say Lebanon, 
uh, Syria, you know, they, they because of their uh, diversity, the cultural diversity, because of the the multi-religious kind of uh, makeup of the society. Also, they had really uh, they also had a, a different experience in terms of how sport was disseminated, how then how they embraced uh, modern sports, you know, to try to consolidate their uh, society um, uh, and also the diversity uh, in, in society. Uh, which uh, it, it wasn't always successful because of, uh, you know, for example, the case of, uh, of Lebanon um, uh, and the civil war. Uh, but yeah, so I will say that there are different historical trajectories uh, which um, impacted on the, the the process of dissemination and modernization of sports. And then there are other uh, uh, factors such as uh, the the demography the the, the society uh, itself and factors factors to do with the, the diversity within the society and uh, lately i think the the most important factor is also the economy and the the the, the economic power and particularly in the gulf region you know now they and saudi arabia lately they are coming really with the because they they, they have the, the the possibility to invest uh, in major sports events and to engage uh, uh for some, you know, in an aggressive way, uh, in the uh, in the sports and global sport industry. So, so you mentioned that uh, in, in Algeria, at some point in history, they 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 adopted football as as a national theme that unite the country. Uh, do you see that happening with the Saudi vision for for the coming football as as like as a whole as the Arab identity as a whole? Is there is there like an element like this? Um, I mean soccer because of. Um... It's it's uh, because of popularity and because of its uh, global reach uh, becomes you know um, you know from the beginning from the, the independence of those countries in the region in the MENA region becomes an important uh, uh, vehicle for the consolidation of uh, national identity and sense of belonging um, and as I said in Algeria it's uh, even uh, it was even prior its independence in 1958 why 1958 because it was the uh, the FIFA World Cup in Sweden so they chose to announce the formation of their national team uh, which at that time it was not recognized by FIFA uh, because they wanted to they, they understood the importance and the power of engaging with sport which is becoming more and more uh, globalized because of its uh, uh, you know, because of the development, let's say, of uh, uh, broadcasting and uh, because of its international global uh, reach. So it's becoming easier for you to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, vehicle some uh, messages, political messages or other messages through sports than maybe through the, the, the how we say, the traditional uh, 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 political uh, institutions or other uh, you know, or through other uh, other vehicles, um, yeah. As, uh, then you know, f sport and f uh, f football, part in particular, or soccer, becomes an important, um, uh, you know, I'll say, uh, 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 vic victor or important uh, tool for nation state building, for national uh, branding in these countries, for the consolidation of national identity, particularly around the national team. Um, which will present, you know, the the country in international uh, sports events. Uh, the example of uh, Egypt, as I said, in the 1934, and then after that in the 60s and 70s, it was uh, Tunisia, Morocco, then uh, Algeria in the FIFA World Cup, uh, followed by other uh, countries from the Middle East, uh, the Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, uh, and they joined afterwards by uh, by other countries such as uh, Qatar and Oman. Uh, in the Gulf region, uh, football was also important for the consolidation of the notion of uh, global uh, sorry, Gulf identity or GCC identity. So they, uh, for example, they initiated the, their own tournaments 
called uh, the GCC football uh, tournaments to bring together all uh, countries in the Gulf region, you know, to celebrate uh, football and to celebrate their distinctive identity as, you know, Arabian uh, from the Arabian Peninsula, of, distinctive from North Africa, but distinctive as well from Persian, uh, the Persian Gulf. Um, uh, and, you know, the football, in, this, in because of its globalization, because of its commercialization, uh, it's becoming also an important uh, uh, sector for direct investments for countries like Saudi, uh, for Qatar in hosting uh, the FIFA World Cup and Saudi Arabia, which is following the same model uh, of Qatar, of engaging uh, with uh, the international football industry and bringing uh, football stars to its uh uh, pro uh, league, but also in uh, bidding for the FIFA World Cup. It's a question. Yeah. yeah, I got it. I'm just making sure that there's others here. Okay, I guess we have well asked the question that's come in online. This is from um, one of our students. I was wondering if you could elaborate on the French recognition of players as French only when they win and as African stroke Arab when they lose, since you did some focus on Francophone countries. And if you think that will or is changing at all and on why players may still choose to play for France. The interesting question. I mean, we can have even the whole presentation only about this uh, question and particularly nowadays um, because of the politics in France and how it's shifting maybe uh, toward um, um, I would say uh, far right or too more to the extreme, uh, both in the in the right but also in the left. So uh, football and and sports in general and uh, it's becoming uh, another space to debate. You know the notion of uh, a national identity and uh, and to define who is French. So it seems that now the uh, the French athletes of uh, North Afri African origin, in particular, they are being asked um, to um, more than ever before to uh, define who are they. I mean, are they loyal to the French nation or they are loyal to the uh, countries uh, or their parents' uh, country or their grandparent uh, uh, countries of origin, and uh, so, uh, so, the, so there is uh, this exasperation about uh, it, uh, among uh, athlete, those athletes to um, the feeling that they have always they, they always have to be uh, to be to I mean they always have to be to position themselves in relation to these debates and and we have seen that uh, some. Uh, they, uh, because of that, you know, they choose to not to play for France or maybe because they didn't have the chance to play for the French national team because it's, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, because it's very competitive to be selected to play in the national team. Some of them, they, 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 they choose to play for their country of uh, origin. Uh, but by, by doing that, they can be uh, portrayed in the media as being uh, uh, unfaithful or not loyal to uh, uh, French uh, or to their country of, of birth, uh, just on the basis that, for example, they will be singing another anthem, not not their anthem. Uh, and we have seen even uh, lately for those uh, players who were playing in the national team, but after their retirement, they choose to play like, uh, for example, in Saudi Arabia, the case of Benzema, now is being uh, portrayed as a uh, uh, you know, as being uh, close to the Islamic Brotherhood, just because you know it has it has different positions toward, let's say, the the politics that is happening uh, the, in 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 the in the region, in the particularly Middle East, with regards to what is uh, going on right now in in Gaza. So he was portrayed as uh, maybe uh, close to Hamas, uh, just on the basis that he, 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 you know, he made maybe different position or he expressed his position uh, from, or just just on the basis that he played, uh, he, he's playing, he chose to play with Saudi Arabia. Although what is interesting is uh, that uh, everybody is welcoming the Saudi investment in the. Uh, European football and uh, how the Saudi investment or the Qatari investment is also contributing in uh, improving the performance of uh, uh, of clubs, you know, let's say Paris Saint Germain in, in Qatar or Newcastle uh, in Saudi Arabia. So there is kind of uh, a contradiction in terms of how this debate on identity is uh, uh, is constructed, is uh, 
vehicle in, uh, let's say, in the intellectual and political discourse uh, in the French uh, uh, context. And this is creating some kind of uh, tensions uh, with regards to um yeah the with regards to the, the, the kind of the definition of what is to be a, a, a French or fully French uh while um um how we say um denying somehow your uh, country or culture of uh, of origin mm, yeah so yeah so there's uh, interesting uh, debates uh, that is happening and it seems that sports uh, is the place where uh, all this is. is a, the, the other example is that of the hijab, and uh, uh, despite the international uh, federations, the you know uh, allowing you know the athletes to have uh, hijab to compete in international sports competitions and uh, uh, in the Olympics, the French uh, National Olympic Committee and the French uh, Federation choose not to go with the with the international trends and uh, they choose to continue banning hijab from a sport which you know uh, is impacting on the the how say the the inclusion of uh, those uh, french uh, women that want to uh, express their uh, faith and their uh, religion in the public sphere from participating in, in in sports and this contradict you know somehow the the whole debates about integration and assimilation of uh, uh of you know of, of all the french people with all with their, their different origins into french society and into uh, french uh, sports yeah other questions yeah think that might be all our questions for today. Um, thank you so much for giving this presentation. And as you said, you know, when you started, there was such a paucity of, of studies on sport in the MENA region. And to think now there's an explosion of, of these studies. I think your work has been uh, essential in that. I hope, you know, some of our students here will have taken inspiration from that and look forward to some of these future studies that you've suggested. So thank you very much, Professor Amar. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, you know, you have my email, so feel free to contact me if you want to gauge a little bit further about some of those topics or any ideas that you have about maybe a potential topics for, for research. So I'm open, you know, to discussion and uh, exchange uh, with you all. And uh, thank you again for offering me this uh, uh, platform, you know, to uh, at least to show, I mean, or to present a little bit of uh, some of what the work that I've been uh, doing for the last, you know, uh, you know, f f few years. And uh, I mean, I just want to say that uh, it's all, it it's starting now. It's, it's just the beginning of, you know, there's so much to do in, you know, in terms of uh, uh, research on sports in, in the MENA region. And, uh, um, you know, looking forward for, uh, more engagement on those uh, topics with uh, your students and, and colleagues. Thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.